think there's a lot of people who really understand and know what Thanksgiving really is. At least uh, we don't act like we do. Yeah. And everybody said amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Thanksgiving did not start in 1621 on the Plymouth Plantation. That's not the origin of Thanksgiving. The origin of Thanksgiving, it began, came from God. God was the one who started the whole idea of Thanksgiving. Many centuries before the first Thanksgiving in the United States in 1621, God is the instigator of Thanksgiving. It came from Him because God gave this to His people as a means of their fellowship and union with God. Thanksgiving is not just about saying thank you. There's a whole lot more to it than that. Thanksgiving has to do with fellowship. As a matter of fact, there were five main offerings that God commanded the children of Israel to offer under the law of Moses. There was the sin offering. There was the whole burnt offering. There was the peace offering. There was the trespass offering. And there were the grain offerings. These five offerings all picture something about Jesus. Because the law was all about Jesus. Uh, you don't have to, when you when we come before the Lord and we ask for the blood of Jesus to cover us, we, we lump it all up together into one big flow of blood, all of these offerings, and we often don't take the time to realize what it is that's in the blood. Amen. We don't have time to realize what it is that Jesus actually came to fulfill. Yes, amen. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law, I came to fulfill the law. Yes, yes. Every aspect of the law was given, not because we could fulfill it, but because He could fulfill it. Amen. It was given to us as a picture, as a, as a visible demonstration for us to see and to understand who He is. Woo, hallelujah! Yes. For us to understand what He came to do. That's powerful. So when we go back to the law and we look at the law and we see all the requirements that God had in the law, actually what we are really seeing is everything that Jesus fulfilled for me. Because you and I couldn't fulfill it. We couldn't do it. God gave it to prove to us we couldn't do it. Yes. That we were unable to keep it. We were unable to make ourselves righteous. We were unable to, to fulfill the righteousness in the law by keeping the law. Only Jesus could do that. And then when He came and fulfilled that law, He comes in us, praise God, and makes us righteous through His fulfillment. Am I making sense? Now these offerings are all incredible and even what I'm going to tell you today I feel foolish. I was telling my wife last night about 10 o'clock I was sitting up in the hotel in bed and I was studying and I said I've got to stop. I've got to stop because I'm so full, I'm so overflowing and if I don't stop now I'm not going to know when to shut up today. <laughs> because I'm, I'm overflowing with what I want to tell you. And, and it's, we're only here today and we don't know exactly what Sunday we'll be back. But I'm going to try and jam into this one service some beautiful thoughts that you will take with you out of this building that will give you a different kind of thanksgiving than you have ever had before. Oh, hallelujah! Ha, hallelujah. And somebody shout amen! amen. Praise God! A, a new kind of thanksgiving, a, a refreshed Thanksgiving, not just where you just come together and sit around the table with some family and friends and eat your turkey and your stuffing. <laughs> Praise God. But it may be a living experience because Thanksgiving is to be a living experience. Yes, just like every experience with Jesus is a living experience. Lord, Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want you to go with me to Leviticus chapter 22. And let's look at the first thanksgiving, or God's command for thanksgiving. Now, these five offerings that I just spoke to you about, they're all very unique. However, <clears throat> there was only one of them. Only 
one of these offerings was shared between God on the altar and the priest and the offerer, the one who brought the offering. There was only one of these offerings where the gift that was brought, whether it be a bullock or a goat or a lamb or whatever it was, that was shared between God, the priest, and man. This is why it was called a fellowship offering or the peace offering. Amen. The peace offering is the thanksgiving offering. Amen. In some translations, they don't call it a peace offering. They call it a fellowship offering. Amen. Because this was the offering where man got to fellowship with God. This is the offering where when he brought his sacrifice before the Lord, the Lord returned part of that sacrifice back to him. And he, with the priest, which speaks of Jesus, praise God, and the fire on that altar, they consumed and they ate together in fellowship and union. Thanksgiving has to do with union. It has to do with fellowship. It has to do with coming into a fellowship with God. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah! The sin offering wasn't like that. The offerer got nothing from that. Yes, he got his sins covered and atoned, but he got nothing to, to fellowship with. The whole burnt offering wasn't like that. The grain offerings were not like that. The trespass offering was not like that. There was only one offering like that, and that was the peace offering, or the thanksgiving offering. It was also the only offering that was free will. There were no uh, laws of what it should be, how often it should be brought. It was total free willing. In other words, God does not compel you to give thanks. Powerful. Are you with me? Yes. God does not take you by the arm and go and say, come on, thank me. Come on, thank me. I want to hear some thanks out of you. Oh, God, come, thank you, thank you. That's not what Thanksgiving is about. Thanksgiving was a free will offering. Something that was given from the heart. Something that people just spontaneously. I want to give a peace offering. And that word peace is not the word shalom. Even though it's got the same root letters. It is shalim. And this word shalim does not mean peace the way we think of peace. It means to be complete. It means to be whole. There is only completeness and wholeness in your walk and your relationship with God. When you truly find your fellowship and your union with God, only then can you find wholeness and complete. You can go to church, you can pay your tithes, you can wave your hands, you can clap your hands, you can dance a little bit, you can sing a song, you can read your Bible, you can memorize scripture, you can even repent now and then. Come on. Doesn't mean you're complete. The wholeness comes in the fellowship. The completeness, the being fulfilled comes in the fellowship, in the union. Imagine bringing your little lamb. God never said it had to be a lamb or a goat or a bullock. He said do what you want. You want to bring a, a bullock as your thanksgiving? Praise God to demonstrate your thanksgiving, bring the bullock. You want to bring a, a goat? You want to, the only thing God required, it could not be faulty. Couldn't have a broken leg or a broken nose or a blind eye or because it was a picture of the free willing offering of Jesus Christ. Amen. It had to be a perfect sacrifice. But whatever you choose and how often you choose, that's powerful. Yes. Free, free willing. Given from your heart. Amen. Now you can be grateful. Doesn't mean you're thankful. Well, what's the difference? What's the difference between gratitude and thanksgiving? Mm. Praise God. Brother Willie, come here. Uh, let's say that this box of Kleenex here is, is a, a gift that Brother Willie wants to give to me. And he did something that he knows that I really want. Mm -hmm. He has heard me talk about it. And let, let's say it's a Jaguar. 
because I really want a Jaguar. <laughs> yes, he does. Every time I see a Jaguar, I start to covet, and then I have to repent. <laughs> My favorite car on earth is a Jaguar. I want a Jaguar, one with a Jaguar on the front. <clears throat> one day, God will give me a Jaguar. He will grant me the desires of my heart. Morning, Brother Willie. You might be called to give me one. <laughs> Praise God. And so here, let's not say it's a Jaguar. No, no, just turn around and look at me. It, it, it could be anything. Whatever it is that he knows that I really want. And so he brings this to me and he says, Here, Brother Paul, here's this gift. And I go, oh, I'm so grateful. And, and I have the emotion of gratitude. Gratitude is a noun. It's not an action. It's a, it's a noun. It's an emotion. It's a feeling. And I walk away from him grateful. I'm so grateful. But there's no thanksgiving. Wow, that's powerful. There has to be a sign of a higher. There has to be a recipient for you to be thankful. There's got to be some union. There's got to be interaction. I can go to the moon and be all alone. Nobody there. I can be grateful. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. I can have a feeling of gratitude, an emotion of gratitude, but I'm not thankful. There's no one to be thankful to. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving has got to be to somebody. Now, let's do this again. I come to Brother Willie, or he comes to me and says, I, I got this for you. I know you wanted this all your life. My first emotion is I'm overwhelmed with emotion of gratitude. I'm so grateful, but then the gratitude spills over to Brother you. Thank you so much for my Cadillac. Not Cadillac. Why did I say Cadillac? You put that on me. For my Jaguar. I'll take a Cadillac too, okay. Thank you so much for my Jaguar. There, there's an expression, there's an interaction, there is a union, there is a fellowship that takes place. Am I making any sense? Yes. Thank you, my brother. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Somebody else can bring the Lord. Woo! Let's bring. Now I know why I wanted you on the front row. You can whistle anytime you want. That's powerful. Yes. Hallelujah. Do you, do you remember the, the ten lepers that Jesus healed? And he said to them, you know, go your way. Go your way and show yourselves to the high priest. And as you go, you will be healed. Don't tell me they didn't turn away feeling gratitude. Of course they did. If they hadn't, if they felt scorn and resentment, they said, what? That's all you're going to do? Tell us to go to the, show ourselves to the priest? Well, no way, I'm not going to do it. No, but they turned around and they walked away. But only one turned back with thanksgiving. Wow. Only one came and had the sign of a higher. This experience of the union. This experience of giving thanks. This experience, praise God, of sharing with each other. Am I making any sense to anybody? Uh, Thanksgiving is about fellowship. Yes. It is about union. It is about coming into a, a, a intimacy with God. Amen. No wonder so many of us and so many of God's people generally in the world today don't experience the presence of God. Because this is the most ungrateful generation, yes. unthankful generation I think I've ever been in. Yes. Everybody say amen. Amen. Doesn't matter whether you say amen or sit there and gawk at me. The, <laughs> the truth is still the truth. Yes, it is. We are in a, an unthankful generation. Yes, right. A society that is unthankful to each other, unthankful to God first and foremost, unthankful for the blessings bestowed upon us. We are an unthankful people. Yeah. Bunch of spiritual bastards. Come on. It's good. It's true. And yet, God, in His great, infinite mercy, wisdom, kindness, love, uh, right. keeps pouring out. That's it. Keeps pouring out. Oh, Jesus. Keeps loving His people. Keeps giving us what we need. Sharing with us. Protecting us. Covering us. 
leading us, guiding us, providing for us. And yet we act like, God, who's God? Yeah. Yeah. Why bother God? Why bother with God? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. It's amazing to know, and, and I, I, like I said, this is a big subject. I'm going to do my best to get somewhere in it. But there's a lot to tell you. I wasn't even going to go to this part. But in Leviticus, it teaches us that every sacrifice, not, not sacrifice, every meal that anybody in the camp ate from the herd, whether it be the bullocks or the calves or the goats or the sheep or whatever it may be, they could not just go out into the field and slaughter their dinner. It didn't happen like that. Anytime they ate meat, it was through a thanksgiving offering. Every time they ate meat, they had to bring it to the door of the tabernacle. And that's where it was slain. And God got his part. And the priests got their part. And the offerer got their part. In other words, every time they ate meat, they were in a new fellowship and a communion with God. Oh, you talk about powerful yeah. principle. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Every time they offered that thanksgiving, it was to bring them into a new fellowship with God. God said, you go out there, you go out in the field, and you take a lamb, and you kill it, and, and you take it to your house, and you cook it, and you eat it without first offering it to the Lord. Praise God, you are a sinner. That's right. Every offering went through the doors of the tabernacle into the courts of the Lord, offered unto God first. Why? Fellowship. I mean, look at what we do at Thanksgiving. Well, what is the main thing we do? Thank you. We eat alone? No. There's a, a, a few or maybe many poor souls who are alone and eat alone. But the celebration of Thanksgiving is about fellowship. It's about coming together, sitting around a table, and eating together, talking, and fellowshipping. Where did that whole notion come from? It came from God. It was the original thanksgiving that God gave to His people. You bring your sacrifice free willingly. You give it to me free willingly. I'm not going to tell you what day or what hour, morning, noon, or night. I'm not even going to tell you what kind, except make sure it has no blemishes. I just want you to bring it free willingly. There were three offerings involved in this. It was the thanks offering, the offering of paying your vows, and the free will offering, which had to do with offering of your overflow. And all three of these were free will. They were all according to your own heart, as you wanted to give. But that was the only offering that brought man into this kind of union and fellowship with the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Leviticus 22 verse 29, sorry. And when ye will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. Offer it at your own pleasure. That means, it's the word razon wow. in Hebrew. Offer it at your own pleasure. Offer it at your own will. I am not going to compel you to do this. But then, if you don't do this, you also won't have this fellowship. Wow, I love it. Powerful. There is an effect of this uh, act. There is an effect of this thanksgiving offering. And the effect is fellowship. Mm -hmm. It is union with God. But I'm not going to tell you to do it. What? I'm not going to tell you to come into fellowship with me. I'm not going to force you into a, a meal. You and I together communicating, supping together. I'm not going to squeeze you and compel you. Right. Praise God to walk in this level and realm with myself. That's, That's why God leaves it up to you. Yes, He does. He does not say, look, I'm drawing nigh to 
see you. Will you please draw nigh to me? God says, draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Show your will in action. Woo. Show what's inside of you. Put it in motion. Yes. In action. Yes. Bring your thanksgiving yes. offering unto the Lord Woo. as a free will. Yes. And I'll, I'll stop with you. How? I'll take my part. The high priest, picture Jesus Christ. Well, the mediator will take his part and you get your part and then here we eat and we fellowship together. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah! This is what Thanksgiving is all about. Praise, Praise God. Psalm 50 verse 7. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. In other words, give me your ear first. Listen first and I'll talk to you. It's no fun listening to someone, I mean speaking to someone who ain't got an ear. Come on. You're looking over there. Why are you talking to me? Well, <laughs> I know as a preacher that it's difficult to talk and to share with people when the ear is deaf. Amen. People can look at, look at you in the eye, but you know they're not listening. Their minds are on McDonald's after church. <laughs> or something. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, even thy God. Listen now. This is so good. I will not reprove thee, for thy sacrifices of burnt offerings to have been continually before me. In other words, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna whip you, I'm not gonna tell you off for making all these sacrifices of sin offering and whole burnt offering and, and trespass offering. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rebuke you for that. I required it. Right. God was the one who said, do it. He said, but I'm so I'm not gonna rebuke you for that, but he said. But in verse 9 he says, But I will take no bullock out of your house, nor he goes out of your folds. I'm not going to go and, and take something from you. Man. I'm not going to go and, 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 and make an offering for myself. I'm not going to go out in the field and, and lift up a bullock and bring it to you and say, Don't. Here, give it to me. You know why? It's already God's. Look what he says in the next verse. For every beast of the forest is mine, and every cattle upon a thousand hills. What do you have to give God that's not already God's? Right. Amen. Come on. Amen. It's good. Woo. Well, I can give my life. It's already God's. That's right. Amen. The Bible says you are already, you are already bought with a price. You are not your own. Amen. Even though we act like we are our own. Amen. But we are not our own. That's right. We are bought with a price. We are owned. That's right. He has purchased us. Yes, he has. With the most valuable substance called his blood. We are not our own. So you can say all you want. Well, praise God. I give myself as a living sacrifice. Yep. Listen to what Paul said to Romans, the Romans in chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. Come on. It's no big deal. You're just giving back to God what's already God's. It's your reasonable service. You're not making any big sacrifice. Hello? Oh, I'm getting ready to tell you about Thanksgiving. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! I wish somebody here would get excited. Woo! Hallelujah! Thank you, baby. I'll, 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 we can go to the back room and I'll preach to you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, for God's people to get on fire. Right. Praise God. Don't you think we've been dead long enough? Yes. To, oh, gobble, so oh, and so he said, I'm not going to go out into your, your, your flocks and your, your herds. 
I'm not going to go out and, and, and take a bullock and put it in front of you and say, okay, no, give it to me. Sacrifice it to me. Even though God really did that. Because he told them, bring me the bullocks and bring me this for the whole burnt offering and that for the sin offering and that for the trip. This is what I require. I've got to draw a picture of my son. But he took no delight in it. I'm getting ready to prove that to you. This was not where, his, where he was satisfied. It never satisfied the father until his son did it. As a free will offering. So Glory be to God. It never satisfied the Father. If it satisfied the Father, the Father would have said, Son, stay right here. I'm satisfied. Yeah, come on. There you go. It's yeah. enough. That's good. We don't, you don't have to go. They've already offered all the bullocks and lambs and rams and everything that I, I, I'm filled up. I'm satisfied. No, he was not satisfied. This did not satisfy him. Mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. Look what it says. And, and, and every beast, verse 10, of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. In other words, you can't give me what's already mine. I, I, I already own it. Yeah. I own all these things out there. I own every bullock in your field, every lamb, every ram, everything. It's already mine. Right. Hallelujah. Verse 11. I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field. Are mine. Some translations say, I know them all by name. Wow. He knows every sparrow that falls. It's all his. The cattle on a thousand hills, it's all his. What can you go and take and give to God that is not already God's? What can you offer to God that is not already God's? What can you give Him where God will say, I'm satisfied. Praise God. Uh, 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 this is something that will teach us to walk in a greater union with His presence. Jesus. A greater union of, of fellowship with the Lord. Look what He says in verse 12. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. <laughs> Hello? God says, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. Because you know what you'd do? You'd go kill one of my beasts and try to feed me. <laughs> if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. In other words, you can't do anything. You can't, you can't go and take from my creative world of all of the substance out here and give it to me and act like you have done me a favor. We, we think we've done God a favor by offering our lives as a living. Well, I'm going to go to Africa for three years and give my life up to the Lord to serve God on the mission field. And the Lord looks at you and says, great, that's what I've called you for. You're just doing your reasonable service. Amen. Because it's already God's. Yes. Man. Are you getting interested? That's yeah, good. Hallelujah. Woo! Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And then he goes on to verse 30 and he says, Will I eat the flesh of bulls and drink the blood of goats? Is that what you think I want? Is this what you think is going to make me happy? Is this what you think is going to make me satisfied? Even though God told him to do all of that. Right. Bring the bulls, bring the goats, pour the blood out, let it burn, make the offerings. God had very specific rules and laws for all of these things. So he could demonstrate what his son came to do. Amen. Praise God. But then he goes on to say, Offer unto God what? Say it. Thanksgiving. Someone talk to me. Thanksgiving. I don't hear you. Thanksgiving. This is more fun than the, than the nursery. <laughs> Thanksgiving and pay your vows unto the Most High. I, I told you the three offerings included in the peace offering was Thanksgiving, pain of the vows, hallelujah, and the free will offering or the giving of your overflow. How many vows have you made to the Lord in your lifetime? How many times have you said, Lord, 
If you do this for me, I will do this. Oh, I promise you that on 1st of January, 1975, yeah, some of us go back that far, and some a lot further, I won't say who. Praise God. On the 1st of January, 1975, God, this is my turnaround. I promise you, from this day on, how many of the vows that we have vowed, God, have we actually kept? God said in the book of Malachi that he, he, he disdains, he cannot stand when people make a vow. He said, don't make a vow for the male book of your field and bring me something that's diseased. Ooh. Hallelujah. But yet this is what we do. Jesus. This is how we live. Well, God, I will give it all up. I will sell it all. I will offer it up to you. But I'm just going to like Ananias and Sapphira. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Free will offering. Thanksgiving offering. Paying the vows offering. I will give you, Lord, what my heart has promised. I will give of myself in a way that will bless and please your heart. Can I keep talking? Yes. yes. All right. Go with me. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Woo! In Psalms. Psalm chapter 69. Run over there quickly first. Let me read that to you, and then we'll go to Jonah. Woo! Glory. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Psalm 69, it says in verse 30, listen, to, listen now. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify Him with Thanksgiving. This shall please the Lord. Wow. Oh, Hello. Hello. Yeah. This shall satisfy the Lord better than an ox or a bullock that's got horns and hoofs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the ox and the bullock are already his. Yes. <laughs> good. Yeah. Glory! Hallelujah! Yes. Hallelujah. It's already his. There is no satisfaction in that for him. Yes. yes, he required it. Yes, he said do it. Praise God. It was part of his demonstration. We, they had to do that. Glory. It was part of the law. The law was a schoolmaster that brought them to Christ. Right. Paul said to the Galatians. All these things had to be to, to make a prophetic demonstration of who Jesus was. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. fulfillment of it all then the father was happy yes. because Jesus said this is what he said no man takes my life from me mm -hmm. I lay it down yes, yes, Jesus. myself I give a free will offering yes. I offer myself as a peace offering as it were I give myself praise God for communion with my father and to bring all creation into communion Praise the name of Jesus. So he says, pray, uh, I will praise the name of God with a song, magnify him with thanksgiving. <clears throat> this also shall please the Lord better than all these other sacrifices. That word please is, is yotab in Hebrew. And it means to make happy. It means to bring cheer. It means to cause to be content. And satisfied. It means to please. It means to make merry and to find favor. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord. You want that kind of favor and union with God? Yes. Give Him something He hasn't given you. Thanksgiving. Amen. The peace offering. Jesus. He is my peace. He's taken away the middle wall so that we can fellowship. One with the other. Yes. Amen. He is the peace. Yes. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And through thanksgiving and offering thanksgiving to the Lord. Well, when I talk about thanksgiving, what am I talking about? Am I talking about... Thank you, God. 
and the grinding at your guts, grinding your teeth. Okay, I've got to give God something that He hasn't given me, so I'm in the middle of hell. Yeah, come on. Thank you. <laughs> if you gave something to your children, and that was the response you got, would it bring them near? Or would it cause a divide? Mm -hmm. I dare say it would cause a divide. Yes, amen. It would not open anything up. It would not create <coughs> fellowship and, and union. Let's go to Jonah now. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Chapter 2. <clears throat> I love the story about Jonah. This guy, he's a wonder. But yeah, he was a powerful man of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. But here Jonah, he's been, he's been thrown overboard. And uh, he's floating down there in the, in the ocean. And the big fish comes along and swallows him up. <clears throat> and it says in verse 17, The Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Where are you? I'm Jonah. Mm -hmm. Chapter, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. 117. Okay. Yeah, 117, sorry. And then now I'm going to chapter 2. I was in chapter 1, verse 17. <clears throat> so he was in the fish for three days and three nights. Try, try and do that and see if you live. <laughs> I don't think many of us would live. Jonah prayed unto the Lord as God out of the fish's belly. So there was some life there. He prayed out of the fish's belly and he said, I cried by reason of my affliction. Oh, get a hold of this, people. Uh, by reason of my affliction unto the Lord and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell. His body was there in the fish. But his soul was definitely somewhere else. Amen. Hello? Yeah. Praise God. Out of the belly of hell cried I. And you heard my voice. Now let me read through this now. And just give you a picture of where Jonah was. For thou hast cast me into the deep. That's the Metzulah. Into the midst of the seas. We talk, we've seen hell. We've seen the deep. We've seen the midst of the seas. That would be enough for most of us right there. Amen. To say I'm, I'm, I'm a goner. I'm, I'm doomed. I'm damned. It's over. Mm -hmm. But that's not all. And the floods compassed me about. And although thy billows and thy waves, they passed over me. Trying to get a picture of where he is. Yes. Of the kind of condition that he is in. Of what he is going through. Of what he is experiencing. We think we go through hell. Oh, come on. We think we experience great affliction and great pain. I don't think any of us have even been close. To what Jonah was experiencing on this day. Hell? I cried out, hell! I was in the deep. I was in the midst of the seas. I was in the midst of the billows. In the midst of the waves. I was compassed about. I was surrounded. I couldn't do anything. I was helpless. I was hopeless. I couldn't revive myself. There was nothing that I could do. He's, a, he's in an absolute position of relying on God. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah! God had already taken his life. He couldn't say, God, I'll give you my life! God had already taken it. Mm -hmm. It was already God's. Mm -hmm. That's good. Jonah couldn't cry out of the midst of hell and say, Oh God, here I am! I'll give you my life! God's looking up there and said, That don't satisfy me. I already got your life. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're already mine. I've already got you in the palm of my hand. Mm -hmm. What are you offering your life to me for? It's already mine. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 
going on. And then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. He had that wit about him to turn one more time his heart and his soul towards the temple of God. The waters compassed me about even to the soul. So we're not just talking about physical waters. We're talking about spiritual waters. Yes. Yes. You can't compass the soul with physical water. Yes. It's got to be. He's, he's going through a spiritual experience. Yes. Hallelujah. His body is in the flesh. But he's somewhere else having an experience. Am I making any sense? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Moving on. The death closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I'll bet you they were. <laughs> Praise God. He's down there and his body's just all... <sighs> he's got weeds around and all sorts of who knows what down there in that uh, fish's belly. Mm -hmm. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. It seemed like there was no escape. Mm -hmm. There was no way out. I was imprisoned. Wow. I was in the bars of the imprisonment of the deep. Hallelujah. Look at the condition this man is in. Mm -hmm. Look at where the, he had nothing to give to God. Except one thing. What's your name? Stephen. Stephen? I like you, Stephen. <laughs> See, he's listening. He's talking to me. You should be on the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yet hast thou brought up my life. You brought up my life. Because yes. it was in your hand. Yeah. It was already yours. From corruption. Oh my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer uh, came in unto me into thy holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But, with all of this going on, with all of the woes and the billows and the waves and the seaweed and the hell and the bars and the depths of the mountains and, the, and the, uh, 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 all the other things that I just read to you, that, uh, just, just try and get a mental picture. Of the, the oppression and the depression and the darkness and the helplessness and the hopelessness and the despair. Lord, it's all in your hand. I got nothing to do, nothing to give you. But I can look unto your holy mountain. I can look to your temple and I will sacrifice unto thee the voice of thanksgiving. And I will pay that I have vowed. Oh, yes. That's I will give you my peace offering. Yes. I will give you something you did not give me. Mm. Hallelujah. I will give you my thanksgiving. And I will give you my vow. Yes. I promised I would serve you. And I didn't do it. But now I'll do it. I will. Hey, I'm a fire. Yes. Glory be to God. I'll give you something you didn't give me. Uh -huh. I will offer unto you. Praise God. Yes. My sacrifice. Of thanksgiving. Jesus. Can you see why Thanksgiving is a sacrifice? Yeah. There he was. What was he being thankful for? He's in the he's in hell. Yeah, he was. What's he being thankful for? He's compassed about. He's got seaweed wrapped around his head. He can't see. It's pitch black darkness. His life is drained out of him. Praise God. He's in the midst of the deep, the bars. Praise God of, of the creative forces below, around about him, seems like he said forever. I'm stuck. There's nothing I can do. And there's nothing to be thankful for, that's for sure. <laughs> but Thanksgiving is born, listen to me. Thanksgiving is born from remembrance. 
not from the moment. Wow. Gratitude is an emotion of the moment. Thanksgiving is born from remembering. He said, when I remembered you, I remembered who you are. I remembered what you have done for me. I remembered where I walked. I remembered how you have blessed me. I remembered all the things you've given me since the day I was born. I remembered how you protected me. I remembered how you anointed me. How you have called me to be a prophet. I remember. I remember. You know what our problem is? We forget. Yes, sir. And when we forget, we become unthankful. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There was nothing down there feeding a sense of thanksgiving. With all of this going on, all of this turmoil going on in his world where he was right now, with nothing to offer God, nothing to give him. But he said, when I remember, when I remembered the Lord, oh. hallelujah. What was the problem with the nation of Israel? They forgot. Mm -hmm. yeah. When they came out of Egypt and went through the wilderness, they forgot yeah. what God had already done. Go read through the first five books of Moses and see how many times God says, Remember. Remember. Yes. Remember what I've done. Remember what I did to Pharaoh. Remember what I did to the Egyptians. Remember what I did at the Red Sea. Remember what I did in the waters of Merah. Hallelujah. Don't go through this Thanksgiving looking for something in the moment. Come on. Remember. Yes. And let this remembrance cause you to bring your peace offering. Cause you to bring the gratitude and to pay your vows and to give up your overflow to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what brings you into union. This brings you into a fellowship with God that you can get no other way than by thanksgiving. Hallelujah. In the midst of excruciating darkness and pain, it is a sacrifice. The, the word sacrifice is, has a beautiful meaning. The sacrifices of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. When I, when I contemplated this, why... Why would thanksgiving be a sacrifice? Mm -hmm. When obviously you're thankful for something. It's an effect. Thanksgiving is an effect. But we, I was thinking about it as an effect in the moment. Like he handed me the gift and I was thankful in the moment. But it's, it's a sacrifice of thanksgiving because it's got nothing to do with the moment. It's got to do with remembrance. It's got to do with remembering of where, where God already has led you. Man. Where He's already brought you from. Hey. You know, you, you, you. most of you probably sit around on Thanksgiving. You sit around your table and you go around and you ask, well, what are you thankful for? And you don't talk about what you're thankful for in that moment. The turkey or whatever's in front of you. Right. Yeah, some of you might say that. You're, you're pretty shallow. <laughs> Well, praise God, I'm thankful for the turkey and for the stuffing. <laughs> but usually your thanksgiving will go back to something yes. that happened to you in the last year. That's true. Or two or five. This is where thanksgiving is born. It's born from remembrance. Uh -huh. When we forget the Lord our God, God told His people over and over again, unless you forget... He told them to put tassels on the hems of their garment and between their eyes, lest they forget. In other words, they, they were so forgetful of who God was, and forgetful of the name of the Lord, forgetful of what He'd already done. He told them to wear these things, so when they looked down, they're walking in the way, oh yeah, I, I remember the Lord, I remember the Lord. Because that's how us humans are. We are so quick to forget who God is, we are. what God has done, what He has already accomplished, yeah. where He is, what He has already brought us through, where He's already brought us to. Yes. 
Thank you, Jesus. So there was a, a constant reminder. Remember. Mm -hmm. Remember. Yes. Remember. Yes. Lest you forget. Thank Lest you forget. Remember who I am. Yes. Remember yes. what I have done for you. Yes. This is a sacrifice. It, the word sacrifice means, I love this, an act of giving something valued for the sake of something else regarded as more important and worthy. Giving, let me do it again. An act of giving something valued, giving something valued for the sake of something else regarded as more important and worthy. What is more important and worthy than a fellowship and relationship with God? That's right. There can be nothing no. as important and worthy as that. Amen. So it's giving something in exchange. You give free willingly. You offer this in the midst of darkness, misunderstanding, death, trial, despair, hell, billows, bars, darkness, deep, death, waves, seaweed. <laughs> I always remember him as Brother Seaweed. <laughs> Praise God. All of that and much, much more. And in the midst of all that, thank you. Offer the sacrifices of thanksgiving. Something he did not give you. A free will from the heart. This, Psalm says, shall please the Lord. More than bullocks and goats. In a relationship. Exactly. Bringing you into this relationship with God. Do, 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 can, you, can you understand, can you even begin to see why the enemy of our souls tries to strip us of thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. can, you, can, can we begin to understand uh, why it is so difficult to be thankful? Because it's got such power. It opens so many avenues and doors Lord. of fellowship and relationship yes, with God. It's good. It's awesome. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, one day, when Daniel and his friends and comrades and, and nation, people of, of Israel, were in, in Babylon. And uh, Daniel was an awesome man. Daniel is the only guy in the Bible God never said anything bad about. There's nothing negative ever said about Daniel. God loved that man. Praise God. He, he, was, he was a guy who had a fellowship and relationship with God like few. And here, Daniel went openly every day to his window. And he opened it up and he prayed. Boy, and, and the counselors of king, you know, they, they came and, and, and spoke to the king and said, you know, you, you need to make it some kind of decree that nobody for the next 30 days is allowed to ask any God or anything but you. Because they had it out for Daniel. They hated Daniel. They were jealous of Daniel, of his countenance. He was a good looking man. He was a healthy man. He was a godly man. And they looked at this like, we don't like him. And they say, why don't you do this? And so all petitions must only come to you. Well, that fed, his, fed, fed, that, that fed his God ego. Uh -huh. And he said, yeah, I like that idea. So he signed this decree well. that no one was allowed to pray to any God except to come to him. Well, you know what Daniel did? Daniel went right up to his chamber. And the Bible says he opened his window and he prayed and what? Thank you. I knew you would know. He prayed and gave thanks. He gave something to God 
Why? Because he was so excited about knowing he was going to go to the lion's den? That's what they said. Anybody who prays to another God, you're going to go to the lion's den. Don't you say, ah, that's okay. Put me in the lion's den. But in the midst of it all, I'm going to pay my vows. In the midst of it all, I'm going to offer up the sacrifices of thanksgiving and bless his name. So he did. Opened the window. He gave Todah. He gave thanks unto the Lord. And he went to the lion's den. But nothing happened because he had already given thanks. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if I'm making sense today or not. I tried to give a, lot, a big subject in a, a few moments. And there's a whole lot more to it. 16. And verse, uh, verse 17 says, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. 116 verse 17, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call upon the name of the Lord. Verse 18, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of his people. Yeah. In the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of thee of Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads. We're grateful today, Lamb of God, for this uh, gathering of your people. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the Spirit of God. Thank you for loving us. For giving yourself for us. We truly have so much to be thankful for. It is no wonder that you have told us in your word that in everything, give thanks. Remembering all that you've done. Teach us, God, to bring our sacrifices of thanksgiving to you. In all things. When we don't feel like it, to remember what you've done. When we're going through hell, to remember what you've done. When we don't understand, to remember what you've done. Yes. When we feel ill, to remember what you've done. Thank you, Jesus. When we're down in the pit, to remember what you've done. Yes. When we feel like we're walking through hell, to remember what you've done. Yes. When we feel wrapped around a seaweed and depressed and despondent and in despair, to remember what you've done. Yes. And to offer to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. That we may indeed come into that greater union and fellowship with you. Yes. We bless you for these things. Touch your people. Make this coming week a living reality to us. As we learn in a greater way to be thankful. In Jesus name. Amen.